from the deep dark reaches of Star Trek Online comes Nicodus and Greebug with another episode of Fleet Action Report. Hello and welcome to Fleet Action Report, the show where we won't don't just play the game, but we teach you how to play the game. And this is episode 112, and it's called Let It Go, Let It Go. Oh, wait. Before I have to stop before we get a DRM takedown notice. Yeah, so. Uh, right. That's a thing now. I'm Nicodus. I- I'm Greebug, still. <laughs> the real Greebug. Um, since we are doing a build episode, which we will get to in a moment, we do not have any guests with us today. But before we get into that, Greebog, how has your week been? Uh, I'm struggling with some creation block it. Uh, it it's been going on longer than just this last week. Uh, I, I don't know how to, like, so those that have been listening know I run two different D&D games. Well, one's more of a Pathfinder 2 game, but D&D still works. Um, it, it's still RP. Um, I, I run two games, and for one of them, I, I don't know why my brain is just struggling to get creative. Um, normally, when I, when I hit these blockages with the other group, I tend to pull from people's backstories to, to feed my, my my thought process. Unfortunately, I have two characters' backstories that I know of. So I can't pull from the other um, three players that haven't given me one. But uh, it, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll come up with something, or I'll just rip off another um, game, show, something that I've watched, read. Because that's what I do. Um, let's see, outside of that, yes... Uh, being a DM is not easy. It takes a lot of creative juice. It's it's really not all that different from, you know, writing a novel or a screenplay or whatever. You get writer's block. It happens. Yeah, that's where I'm... I've tried to feed off of some of the, like... So being in Pathfinder 2, I'm, I, I stuck them in the, the world that Pathfinder 2 is designed with. Um, I, I tried pulling from things that... Uh, is in the world and around the world. Um, so, like, they are not far from, like, the dreaded isle or whatever, They're an island that's basically got this permanent cloud of bad and undead tend to pop up from time to time. I, I just decided to make it spread to the town that they are at, which is across the way, but, uh, yeah. Hey, my screen is not being shared in uh hmm oh well let me fix that while i keep talking outside of that let's see here outside of that <laughs> i have been i mean you can wait until after your segment you can wait for me to talk oh, look at that want. there now and then oh, i'm probably oh. gonna have to do that so that way it doesn't disappear but uh Okay, so I, I've been raiding in World of Warcraft. I now have two Death Knights that are both item level 281. Um, 281's actually decently high. It is above the eye level for faded normal raids, for those that know what that means. Um, but it is below the eye level uh, gear dropping for, for, from faded heroic raids. The fact that I have two guys decked out at that point, um, the one caught up really fast, and I it 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 seems silly, um, but I've been having fun running around. I, I the faded raids are interesting, and a neat new challenge. Um, I am glad it's not going to be a. Well, I mean, it's going to be a forever thing, but I mean, it, I'm glad it's content they're using as filler, versus it being an entire tier. I don't know that I could spend more than the the time that we're going to have for the end of this expansion. Because it's just not a lot of content. It's recycled content, essentially, with, with a new challenge. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of STO things. 
And then someone su said something, and I, I, I honestly thought I might do this next year. Um, some people apparently have two accounts or more and do the event campaign on two accounts or more. So that way, on other captains, they can get the lobby and shift all the lobby stuff to their primary account. I had not thought of that. And... That is a huge time commitment, one, to do that. So I, I don't expect a lot of people to do such a thing. But it, it makes me tempted to do it with a second account. That's a way to get a bunch of lobby, I guess. Well, then you could pick on your main account the special ship you want. And then get a bunch of the lobby stuff you've been wanting as well. But, yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah. Okay, that, that's my week and my, my current thought of, huh. But uh, anyway, how's your week been and what have you been up to? Well, um, like you, I've been planning a DD and d game. Uh, actually, it's a Star Wars game, but D&D &D and moving characters and copying characters and um, whatnot. But I've also, behind the scenes, kind of been prepping myself to start a Belljammer game. Um, I don't know if my players are going to want to switch to that or not. That's an ongoing conversation. But um, Spelljammer's got some cool stuff, and I, I like the concept. So I've got some ideas for a campaign and how to even throw the party together. It's I think it's going to be a lot of fun, but we'll see if it gets off the ground or not. Um, other than that, I, I got roped into Destiny again. So <laughs> I've been playing Destiny 2. That's actually what I was doing right before the stream. Um, getting back into that, getting back into the swing of things. I, I realized I'm not as rusty as I was afraid I would be. Um, but yeah, that's that's been fun. Um, I'm I'm working on old content right now, trying to get my characters their new energy type. It's new, like from two expansions ago, but new for me. Um so that's, it's been taking up a lot of time. It's been a lot of fun, though, getting back into that and playing around. Um, outside of that, I finished a new book, um, part of the, the Zeri Ostrom, if you know what that is. Uh, this one was called Concubine, and it still didn't have my princess in it, or at least not much of her. She's To me, she's, she's the most interesting character in the book. Um, but outside of, like, the first book, She's only had guest appearances in the series. This is book four, by the way. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a fun read if you like uh, stories with political intrigue and, um, you know, politics between fantasy nations and uh, mixed with sword and sorcery. Little little Game of Thrones-ish. Um, I, I highly recommend the uh, Zeri Ostrom by Neen Thomas. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much been my week reading and Destiny and STO. Oh yeah, and doing my build that we're going to go over here in a minute. <laughs> uh, that that's taken up a lot of time. I was working on that earlier today too. A lot of time getting that ready. But that's it for my week. Um, this week in STO, uh, they just announced today that Temporal Agent recruits are returning. They're going to show up on the sixth, and they're going to stay until October fourth. Um, they did not advertise uh, exactly what they're changing, but they did say that they are adding some new goals and rewards, and they are changing some of the old ones to better fit the current uh, state of the game. New, uh, I'm sorry, currently existing temporal agents will have access to these new uh, rewards, um, even retroactively, same thing as they've done before. If you've already done something and now it's a there's a reward for it, you'll automatically get it. Um, if you don't have a temporal agent, I highly recommend you make one. Uh, they do have, as you play the game and you earn these rewards, you can, most of them are account-wide unlocks. Um, so we'll see what the new ones are. I'm kind of interested to, to see that. I have an interesting thought. Yeah. So I've almost completely clean, completed all the goals on, on the temporal agent. So if they're changing them, the stuff I've already unlocked that won't be in it anymore, will I still be able to reclaim? Or will they no longer be be there? Well, 
typically what they do is for for stuff like that they don't remove any of the rewards they simply adjust the requirements to earn it like uh, the great example i keep going back to is the the ground stuff in the delta arc um because that's not as advertised anymore i keep hoping that they would remove that part of the requirement however that would not do away with the reward you would still complete the arc and get the reward so usually it's an adjustment not a removal i i haven't seen them actually remove a reward well what i'm saying like let's say they decide that uh, uh i'm trying to remember i'd have to flip over to my temporal but uh so let's say there's a combination requirement. Um, I can't remember if it does have that or not. And they're like, oh, we don't want to deal with the accommodation. Thing. So we're, we're just going to shift that over into uh, more Admiralty requirement stuff. Because that people seem to like the Admiralty better. So I, I, Yeah, but, but the reward itself, whatever that reward is, would still be there. And if you've already gotten it on Admiralty, then you know you would you would be able to reclaim it as always. I, I've honestly though, I've never seen them make that drastic a change. Usually, it's been pretty minor stuff that they've uh, adjusted. Like at one point in time, they they took out um, the the Doomsday device because they removed that from the game. When they plugged it back into the game, they popped it back into. The recruits. I mean, it's it's been fairly minor stuff, but we won't know until it gets closer to time and they actually detail exactly what changes they're making. All right, the next thing, uh, Mud's primary faction choice pack is now available and on sale. You have nine more days, and thirteen hours to to pick up the the sale price. Um, its default price is twenty nine thousand five hundred. Or roughly three hundred dollars. Um, or on sale, it's right now fourteen thousand seven hundred fifty. So roughly one hundred fifty dollars. So you can spend three hundred dollars at the half price for the mega bundle and get everything, which and on that's the on sale for three thirty thousand then, and uh, so the regular price is sixty thousand then, or or six hundred bucks. Thought of right. Um, from what I've heard uh, and what I understand of the bundle, one, the bundle is probably not for me, um, but it comes with, let me, it comes with the Jem'Hadar Recon, what, Jem'Hadar Recon ship, the Delkina Strikewing Warbird, Sarcophagus Dreadnought Carrier, and the Crossfield Class Science Spearhead. Um... When you do the the cheaper pack, you you get to choose three of them, uh, of, of these all these uh, the th of the four ships or the keys or the ship upgrade, um, or or the uh, ultimate upgrades or the three hundred lobby. Um, if if it were me, I would go with probably. Okay, the Delkina. Is, if you're going to buy this pack, Delkina is supposed to be one of the better ships in the game even still uh has it's great for a torpedo build um from my understanding it, it, i've heard people may have done some awesome uh beam overload builds with it uh the the sarcophagus ship uh, a lot of people there, there's people i've heard that dislike the the appearance but uh from my understanding it can be a decent tank ship but uh it's the slowest game, slowest turning game, in, in, or slowest turning ship in the game. So, as my, my con not really concerned, my, my one objection that they put the other two ships in, the Gemini Recon and the Science Spearhead, is there are legendary versions of both of those, and one of them they just put into game not that long ago. So, I, I, I feel like no, it, it, you if you if you're just looking for the Gemini Recon ships uh, trait and console, the legendary one is going to serve you better because it has all of that and the appearance and you know. But I don't know. 
Yeah. And, and yes, the, in the 10th anniversary, there is also a science spearhead, from my understanding, that has added um, the bridge officer seating's better, yada, yada. And same with the, the Gem Hunter Recon, the seating's from that one on the legendary version as well. Yeah, it seems like a weird choice for there for this pack, but well, being... I'm, I'm I would love the Dalkina, but I'm not gonna pick this up. I'm not spending that much money for one ship. Yes, that, that is kind of my thought. That's why I was like, this is not a bundle for me, um, because two of the ships I don't need. Which means I would have, I, I mean, I, I guess I could pick the sarcoph sarcophagus ship, though I'm not sure I'm a big fan of it either. Which leaves yeah. me other options. Um, though, for those that want suggestions for the other options, don't, don't get the lobby. Um, because a single pack of keys, the 50 keys, you can get two hundred, roughly 270 lobby on average out, out of 50 keys if you were to turn around and burn them uh, on boxes. And that's not counting all the goodies that you get out of it that you can turn around and also sell on the exchange. Yeah, that seems like a really low. I was thinking about that the other day. I mean, at bare minimum, I think they should give 800 lobby because at least then you can buy a ship. It, it should not be below 500, period. That, that, is, that, that is just a simple, it should not. Yeah. In my but, opinion. Regardless. Anyway, anyway. We're, we're, we're dragging on on this one. Um, they're also doing a double experience bonus weekend ended today. Oh, man. Um, yes. Let's see. Is there anything else coming up? Uh, we still have the ongoing no no win scenario event. You have, um, well, here, if you see, I'm going to finish it today. But you have until September 6th to get your completions in. You only need 14, so you better have started because you are below time to get it all done. Though you can get a hefty discount if you, you start today. All right. So our primary target for today is my new... EPG build. Uh, I, I say new because I just finished it. I've actually been working on it for quite a while. Um, so I'm going to start with the ground portion and then I'll go into the ship portion. Um, this is going to go by fast. I have a lot of information to give you guys and some of it, anything that is standard, I'm, I'm just going to kind of breeze over. I want to talk about what's specific, what I'm doing differently because this is, this is by all, you know, Case in point, this is an unusual build. Um, and it, it started with last winter when they came out with this Bream Cryo Shaper uh, armor set. So there's there's four pieces here. You got the kit frame, the body armor, the shields, and a weapon. Um, and the weapon deals cold damage. Now, it's not the only weapon in the game that deals cold damage, but it is the only one that's part of a set that... Uh, well, I'll get into that here in just a second. So um, the kit frame does have K-Perf on it, but it's only got one set of K-Perf. Now, I have not uh, boosted this all the way up to Epic. I believe it does get another... I'm sorry, it's got two K-Perf. I believe it ends up with three when it goes to Epic. Um, but obviously, as you can see, I haven't done that yet. Um, when you get all four of these together open up the details page here. Um, so when you open all this up together, here's what you get. You get temporary health from the cryo barrier, which is part of the armor. Um, you get a boost to the polar blast. Um, with the three piece set, you have dealing cold damage to any foe reduces their cold resistance. So it lets you, uh, not a lot of things have cold resistance, but you know what they do have goes away. And then the set, the four piece is what I'm looking at. This is what I enjoy. It doubles the fire cycle haste of the weapon. Um, and it makes it basically just a constant stream of cold damage. It's a lot of fun. Um, for the kit modules. Now, I've, I went ahead and boosted this captain. So I've got all six slots available for kit modules. All but one of these deal cold damage. So I have the parasitic ice, which comes from a lockbox the micro uh, chi uh, cryonic, if I can talk correctly, warhead, which is from the winter event, the cryo visor blast, which is from the winter event, 
the Cryotronic Modulation, which is also from the Winter Event, and the Andorian Summer, which is actually from the Summer Event that was new uh, this last year. So all of those deal cold damage. And then the last one is uh, the Motion Accelerator, because, you know, why not? Um, and then devices, you can pretty much use whatever devices you want if you want to copy this build. The two that I want to mention specifically are the Andorian Tribble, because it boosts cold damage. It gives, uh, let me get on tongue tied. It gives 2% bonus cold damage for an hour. So that's a straight 2% boost to anything that deals cold damage. Um, it also gives you uh, damage resistance and a 2% bonus to melee damage. Um, and then the other thing is the Pavo Healing Crystal. Now this is pretty standard on a lot of ground builds. Um, because it interacts with the EMH Mark I. So you pop this, you're going to heal your entire away team, and from any of those uh, heals, you can pop an EH, uh, EMH, which will also heal. So I just threw it on here because it's fun. Um, I really couldn't find any other devices that deal damage. There, There's a cryonic, a reusable cryonic grenade that does put a uh, effect on the field of, of snow and ice, but it's really just cosmetic and I, I had it on here for a while and then I actually traded it out for the crystal um, but it it was fun just to throw a grenade and watch snow fall um, but it, it doesn't help me deal damage or anything so if if anybody in chat knows of a good device that uh, would you know deal cold damage please speak up I'm, I'm happy to incorporate that but that's what I got for my ground build here like I said that was pretty quick um, for space we get a little bit more involved here. So my space build is an EPG build. That's that's the best way that I could go about to deal and increase cold damage. So straight up EPG. Um, now there are clearly some differences. I'm using some different uh, bridge officer powers and we'll get into that here in a minute. If you want to look at the, the straight up EPG build, uh, do a Google search for Space Magic in You Ways Guide to EPG. That's what I used as my base. Now, again, I modified it to fit the build I'm wanting to do, but that was the base. And we'll we'll link that in with the show notes when we post this on YouTube. Um, so there's that. But let me jump back into this here. So I'm going to start off with the consoles. So I have exotic particle focusers times four. And as you can see, I'm still in the process of upgrading these. But these give uh, EPG, they give control expertise, and they have uh, a 25% chance to give a 6% bonus exotic damage um, when using any exotic damage ability. So I have four of those. And then I have one exotic particle field exciter. This is a the... Uh, the focusers are from the fleet. The uh, exciter is crafted, uh, or you can buy it on the exchange. And here again, EPG, shield capacity, and then uh, whenever you give a shield heal, you get weapon power um, and more shield capacity. So that was kind of handy to have. And then everything else on here... Oh, nope, I forgot my tactical. I have one tactical console, the chronometric capacitor. This is a reward from an episode, and as you can see with what I have, it gives me the three-piece set here. Um, you get ox power, max, and uh, bonus. Um, and then you have an energy converter, which is a straight-up 8% exotic uh, damage boost and energy weapon, which we're not using a whole lot of. It's that exotic damage we're looking for. So we got the three piece set on that. And then all the other consoles I went with were universal. I have the parasitic ice containment vessel, which is a lockbox. It's also the only thing that straight up boosts cold damage. Um, um yes. Is it still bugged and causes things to drop out of the bottom of the map and you can use it to troll people? I have not had that happen, but I haven't tried either. So there's there's a possibility there. Um I have the auxiliary excuse me, Auxiliary Ejection Assembly. This is off the Kelvin Cruiser. I have the Interphasic Instability, which is an event reward. I have the Interphase Quantum Distributor, which is a lobby. Uh, 
Entangled Quantum Bombardment, which is from an episode, and the Ominous Device, which I got off the Legendary D7, but you can also get it on the Legendary to list. Um, so what you're looking for, in essence, anything that gives EPG, anything that boosts all damage, or you can go with crit, uh, crit chance or crit severity. That's what you're looking for in your consoles. And it's pretty much in that order. So in, in order of priority, EPG, uh, EP, I'm sorry, exotic damage, then EPG, then uh, just flat damage boost, and then crit. You get, should beam up so you here. so your stats will show properly. Oh, there you go. That's a good idea. I was just running around on here because ice. Although, unfortunately, I cannot make an ice castle. I tried. <laughs> okay, let me pull this back up here. There, you can kind of glance at the stats if you want to. All right, so for traits. Now, here again, um, a lot of this is going to be straight up EPG. Like, I, I went with Astrophysicist for the EPG. Um, defense, uh, all damage for the Fleet Coordinator. Um, there's the crit chance. Crit chance and severity. Projectile. Okay, now here's something. So a lot of the damage from this build is going to be with torpedoes because it's an EPG build and there's no cold, straight cold weapons. So boosting your projectiles is a way to handle that. Um, now this one, Symbiotic Ice. So this adds 6% of beam weapon damage as additional cold damage. Again, I do not have a whole lot of beams on here, but this was another way to deal straight cold damage. And it's boosted by the consoles and whatnot. Boimler effect, of course. Um, threat assessment algorithms was one that was recommended because it's basically a free photon torpedo that you get to launch periodically. So why not? And then right now I have Thrill Seeker for the uh, increased speed. Now I do realize that there are, there are still some better traits that I could go with. Um, a lot of them are fairly expensive. And I haven't been able to get those yet. But as far as personal space, uh, again, you're looking for that crit, that EPG, or all damage. So there you go. Uh, space reps. These, again, are, you can flavor it how you want. Um, so there's critical severity, all damage based on ox power. And since we're running ox max, there you go. Um bonus exotic damage, and crit uh, crit chance. So crit severity, crit chance, EPG, just what I was talking about earlier, trying to keep that all together. For the active space, you can put whatever four or five powers in here that you want. I tend to use the same four on every captain. I've got the singularity here to just another you know way to deal damage. A shield heal, a sensor platform that runs interference, and a, a Tetrion damage ability. I, frankly, I don't really like any of these abilities, so you can plug in whatever you want and just run with it. The important thing here is the starship traits. And I've got one that is not correct. Where is it? There it is. So this one's got to go away. We want that one. I don't know why it changed that. So I've got by the book. By the book extends the duration of bridge officer anomalies. I have checkmate. This is a straight up bonus exotic damage when you ever you activate a control bridge officer ability. Um, and we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, improved gravity well, which in basically gives you a hundred percent uptime on gravity well, uh, especially with Boimler. Electrified anomalies, you're going to add extra damage to those anomalies. Unfortunately, this is electrical, not cold, so it doesn't quite fit the theme, but it does blow up stuff really good. And then here, the spore-infused anomalies, it's more electrical damage. Um, so I just stack those two on top of each other. Let me save this so it doesn't hopefully switch that uh, trait back. Believe me, if there was ways to make this cold damage, I would do it. Okay, for your gear, up front you have, well, I have the Dyson Photon Weapon, the Gravimetric Photon Torpedo, 
the particle emission plasma torpedo and the Delphic distortion torpedo. And all of these, according to what I've read online, are boosted by EPG because they all basically make little miniature anomalies. And it works really well with torpedo spread. Uh, the Dyson weapon is part of a set. You get a two-piece set bonus off of using this and the torpedo. And off of that, you get photon weapon damage, a crit chance, and then it lets this use uh, fire at will, which I'm not using in the build. It's the crit chance we're going for. Um, for the deflector, I've got the Elite Fleet Intervention Protomatter Deflector, the thing that is basically on every build in the world right now. For the secondary, uh, there, there's a few thoughts on this, but I went ahead and went with the Strategic Deterioration Secondary Deflector for the added EPG damage. Um, it's a radiation dot. So again, not cold damage, but more damage. I'll take it. Um, the impulse engines I've got, okay, this is where you go a little off of the meta. So I've got the temporal defense initiative combat impulse engines from the temporal rep. And then the warp drive is the temporal defense initiative overcharged warp core from the temporal web rep. Ah, I still cannot talk today. So the reason we do this is because of this right here. The two-piece set gives you 25% all damage bonus for DOT and hazard effects. That includes your space anomalies. So again, it's more damage. That's 25% is a pretty big chunk. Um, and then for shield, this is the outlier here. So the shield is the Iconian Resistance Resilient Shield Array. And the reason we pick this up is it says it removes one debuff every 10 seconds. And since we're not using, you know, the two-piece set with the Tilly shields, this was a better option. Uh, for the aft, we've got the two other pieces of the chronometric set, the omnidirectional and the polar on beam array. So this is just completing that set bonus that we talked about earlier. Okay, now this is where we get into the fun stuff. The officers and the powers I'm using. So again, most of this is going to be pretty standard for an EPG. What I'm going to go over is where I differentiate. So as you can see here on my science officer, I do have the gravity well three, but then I also have the very cold in space three. Uh, this is my first cold damage ability here in space. Um, it deals, you know, 3,400 cold damage there at the bottom and it ignores shields. Uh, Tykin's Rift is another common one. The Delayed Overload Cascade. This was in here to proc some of the other um, traits and whatnot that we went over. It's just another way to, you know, deal a little bit of damage. And then here, the, the thing that started it all, Let It Go 3. Uh, this is the only cold damage ability that I could find for anything other than a science officer uh, in space. So, boom, there you go. For 20 seconds, ignore shields. So it deals 1,000 cold damage every second for 20 seconds, and it reduces their resistance to uh, cold damage. The rest of the abilities, I mean, I've got chemocyte laced weaponry. I've got torpedo spread two because it's the highest that I could get. If you have a, a ship that will let you get three, run three. Um, the only other thing I want to mention is the photonic officer. That's another cooldown reduction. Um it's, again, pretty standard, especially if you're not using Ox to Bat. And it works really, really well with Boimler. And so with this and Boimler, those are really the only two cooldowns that I, I need to make this work. Oh, what did I miss, Grebog? Oh, um, I could go over. I, I didn't add it to the list. I'll have to fix that before we post it. But let me go over duty officers real quick. So, again, this is pretty standard stuff. Now, I, I had no idea what to do with my ground stuff. There there are no officers that I could find anywhere that, you know, increase cold damage or anything like that or deal with cold damage. So there's nothing in here that's going to fit my theme. So I went with pretty standard stuff. I've got the EMH Mark 1. I've got Tendi because both of those work off of the Pavo Healing Crystal. Um, I've got Rutherford because one of my ground officers does use the support drones, so they can now blow up. Um, I'm using uh, security, uh, yeah, security team. So I've got Caitlin in here, and then 
uh, on this character, this right now, this is the only character I have that increases damage, and it's versus Vodwar, but it is ground and space, so why not? Especially if you're going to be running through the uh, Delta arc. Because you're going to fight a lot of them. Um, the important stuff was was more in here, though, the active space. Now, the guide I followed basically said, use the projectile weapons officers, and then the other two that you plug in does not matter. So that's what I've got. I've got a, a stacking crit severity, stacking crit buff, or crit chance buff, and then the uh, reduce the time to recharge torpedoes. Now, there's a free officer. If you wanted to get a rare to plug in here, you can go get law which I have. Why he's not slotted, I don't know, but there you go. You get Law in here. Um, he'll give you the, the bigger boost, uh, boost, and he's free. And then the last two I plugged in, I went ahead and went with the Aftershock Gravity Well and the Toxic Clouds from Torpedoes. So that's another EPG effect with Boimler there. You get a little cloud, and it's just extra damage, especially on a uh, Torpedo Spread. So... Okay, what else did I miss? Anybody have any questions? I went over that really fast. Um, we are going to go blow stuff up here so you can kind of see it in action and watch my clouds of snow falling on people. But anybody have any questions? Uh, it sounds like let it go. The only question I saw was, was what torpedoes they they didn't catch them because you went through so fast um but like i said the, the, in the show notes he has all the gear and i'll be posting those when i put the youtube video up so tomorrow so, night you'll you'll be able to look at the show notes and see it all augie do you have anything that you would recommend instead of the focusers I mean, that's, again, the, the guide I was going off of recommended it, so that's what I, I picked, but I, I've i not done an EPG build before, so I am new to this. I think you could get away with using some of the consoles that have similar ability, similar pluses, but also have something special with them. Um, let me okay. look at some of my consoles. Uh, let's see... That's for control expertise. I mean, oh, it also does have some physical. Other, yeah, I've I've got some other universal consoles that I could plug in here. I was just basing it off of that build. I, I um, know you said yes. Uh, you said there was a question about the torpedoes. Yeah, Mim was just wanting to know your your exact torpedoes, um, and uh, that's why you know all of it's going to be in, is in the write up and will be in the show notes. It is, posted but I don't mind. I don't mind backing up to that. Okay. So let's see the, the weapons I've got the Dyson proton weapon, which is from the Dyson rep, the gravimetric photon torpedo launcher, um, which I did not write down where that was from. There we go. Gravimetric torpedo. So that's the uh, photonic arsenal set. It is from the Dyson rep. Let me add that in here. So that's that's what uh, goes with the uh, Dyson Proton weapon there. The Particle Emission Plasma Torpedo Launcher, or the PEP. Sometimes that will be called the PEP. That's a Lobby weapon. And the Delphic Distortion Torpedo, I believe, is also a Lobby weapon. Um, one thing I would recommend if you have it is the Delphic Terror Generator. Yeah, uh. that was... I went and priced that. That's like 200 million, or it was when I looked it up, anyway. I um, think it I is would... a Lobby console, so might be something some people could pick up. Because it, it does bonus exotic damage on it, 20%, and it also has plus 5% crit severity, which is why people love it. That is one that I was looking at. Um, I've got it on my list. I just haven't been able to grab it yet. Um, hope that helped, man. Is the pep craftable? Um, well, there is one one of the exotic particle 
if that's what you're talking about. They are some there are, there is, are some He is correct. Them. Let me let me fix that. I forgot where I grabbed that. So the pep is a craftable one if you have level 15 in torpedo. Okay, I knew one of them was Lobi. I just had it mixed. So the the pep is craftable. The uh, Delphic torpedo is Lobi. The gravimetric photon torpedo is Dyson. And then I added the Dyson proton weapon to get the two piece. So there you go. Sorry for the confusion, guys. And thank you for the correction. Damn it, Jim. Uh, there's also yeah there, there's if you have consoles that can do similar things as some of the uh exotic particle focusers uh, honestly you'd probably do better well, getting the specials however those don't always come cheap and you either have to spend lobby or get lucky out of a lockbox or buy them on the exchange see i was i was going for ones that deal straight up like a bonus exotic damage rather than boosting EPG. I think you get a bigger boost off the straight damage bonus. Like the auxiliary ejection assembly here gives a flat plus 19% bonus exotic damage. I think that's better than the 37.5 to EPG. So, you know, if you have, if you have more consoles that can do that and eventually now that I know I can shorten my list of focusers, um, I will add a couple more of those in here when I get the chance. But uh, let's let's go run something. Let's okay. do ground. We'll do the event because those go by quick. Um, and just kind of show off a little bit here. We'll go to ground first and then space since that's the order that I went in. And if anybody would like to join us for this, I will toss invites to be kept. Give it a good 10 count here because I know the stream runs a little bit behind. Oh, while we're waiting on that, I should also mention that I am uh, in the middle of a thunderstorm. So if I vanish, you know why. Everything's fine. Okay. That should have been long enough. So I'm going to go ahead and queue us up. All righty. So I take it uh, Augie doesn't like this ship? Um, I think the seating's a bit not preferential for, for a lot of stuff. So. But, I mean, if, if you can make it work. It, it all depends on what you're going for. Are, are you going to chase numbers with it? Then it, it's... It works for this build because with with this build I don't need any specialist seating. Um, so it works. It may, uh, may be actually a bit, a bit further behind than us. We can pick Mim up after we're done with this if he's still wanting to go. That's fine. All right. Yeah. The the seating. That's why I was like, okay. There are many ways to play the game, many ways to have fun. Um, so. There's my snowflakes. Just because. I mean, your build is probably a decent build, probably is good to go through advanced and, and such. It oh, yeah, I... probably would not be up to elite, so you might be able to trick it out and get it there. Um, Well, like I, I know it's a subpar build because I'm not using ready, all of the straight EPG the abilities that I can get my hands on. But it is fun. And I like watching the snowflakes fall on people's corpses. Um, why is there... Oh, now we shall that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Um, so these are Borg. Borg will adapt to the cold damage. They didn't used to, but I found out yesterday that they do now. And Borg I adapt to every, a... I think, near everything now except for physical. Yeah. Which I do have. I am using the uh, Urshans because it, it fits my character, but. 
we go. Now we're back to people that my cold damage can deal. So as you can see with the 100% uh, uptime on the beam, it's like a constant stream of cold damage. And it, it does do its job fairly well. On top of that, Make ready, the lightning round begins now. we get nice little cold effects all over the place. And torpedoes and I-beams. Oh, there's one torpedo. It's the cryonic torpedo thing. Hey, I got free lightning balls. Lightning balls? Yeah. So, uh, uh, the kit frame I'm using is from Summer Event. And if you use any module that is from Summer Event, you can trigger free Summer Event modules, even ones you don't have equipped. Who are we missing? It would seem a bigger challenge. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got it. Sometimes it's just slow. I do have a spam bar on this character, so all of my abilities are acting pretty much on cooldown, um, which is handy. So that's why I'm keep constantly throwing grenades and stuff. And there went another one. And there's more electric. That's yours. I haven't done a uh, spam bar for ground yet. I, I did it at the same time I did my space one, but we're going to talk about that next week. Okay, so we'll get out of here. We'll invite Mim, and we'll go do uh, this in space. So you can see all my ice anomalies. You fought with honor, despite the odds. Oh, don't forget to claim it, I your next efforts in the arena. Kapla! Thank you. Thank you. And I'm just going to map so you can... That way we can go ahead and get the uh, lobby. And Not thank lobby. you for reminding me. Mark, okay, thank you for and reminding there's me. Moment and Grebog. Here, let me... I, I'm pretty sure he is in Discord. Let me drag him down. Okay. Welcome. Hi, um, now okay, you can now. hear us in real time versus 10 minutes later or whatever. Now we have a guest with us. This is Mement. Mement, do you have a joke for us? Uh, I will get one s shortly. <laughs> See if you can come up with something ice. <laughs> well, I, I would tell a joke, but I'm not sure I would tell her right it. Nice. Oh, dude, that's a good one. <laughs> Let me claim this, and then I'll queue us up for the next one. Here we go. Space. Kobayashi Maru. Aim is jumpy. That's unusual. Hey, Welcome I mean, it could have been while my facility in this no. exercise. I, 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 I will likely once I move, uh, once we find a place and whatnot, I will have a whole different internet setup. You still working on that? Yes. It's probably not going to happen until after winter. We have Baroness of Borg. Simon, Menth. Where's our other person? And the Vengeance. Okay. You're the only uh, base jelly. This is the Kobayashi Maru. 19 periods out of all tier 6. We have struck a graphic mine and have lost all power. Our highest penetration. All right, here we go. Here we go. I don't think anybody knows. I kind of think that's the point. At least you can keep the torpedoes off of them. If you think they're going to show up over here. Here we go. And there's the parasitic ice away. Let it go. And he's dead. It's not over yeah, yet. Cool. The next wave is coming. There's the... Oh, I got my... Oh, 
Augie's right. He's shivering. I can't see, so... <laughs> I, I love space, uh, or this, you know, the EPG stuff, but sometimes it's just, it's just too much. Like on the overlay graphics and. Get ready for another wave. Hey, Terran. We're just gonna try to tear it up. Uh oh. Either after this oh, or I think I know what happened. Um, so hey, I'm going to go to a just debug screen for now because I'm pretty sure that was a message from Nicodus that's saying he lost power. Um, because I, I have noticed on his stream, it is stopped. It's not over yet. Yeah, the next wave is coming. So one, once, hopefully it kicked over. Yeah, it's it kicked over to just me. Um, once it filled, oh, I got defeated because I was corrected. So, so once the stream catches up to what I, I'm sending it, it'll, it should... I probably need to. Well, if he can get back, we will go back to him. Um, Warning. Ship is under attack. I just realized I left my engine on and I took it out of the air. Wait, I didn't think it went far. It gets somewhere eventually. Enough that. Get out of the combat area a little bit. All integrity below 75%. Hey, hey. Hi. Well, welcome back. Did you freeze yourself out? <clears throat> Heads up. Uh, Another yes, wave is coming exactly your way. What happened. Um, power cycle in the house. It, it kicked off, everything went black, and then it came the right back up. technical difficulties are fix is active. Let me know when you are back, back, or, or we can just stick with just a Grebug viewing for now. I mean, we are going to be finishing up here. Um, I, you might be able to come back in and join us. He's not in the list anymore. No, he's not, but uh, I've seen people Come back online and come back into a group since he started technically i would say it's worth a try the worst that would happen it won't let him Nice. Like after this or depending It's not over yet. The next wave is coming. Enemy assault incoming. Survive the onslaught. Org. Rear shields failing. Four shields failing. Right shields failing. You guys still there? Yes, we we're still here. Oh, that's a funny. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of how that console like takes control of my Kobe my Ashton camera. Kobayashi's health is at fifty percent. I love uh, Jim saying, "Oh my god, the above." Okay, Epic's up. Can I get messy? Still yeah, might have time. Health is at yeah, probably not going to make it. 
Sorry, I, I'll need to run it again though to get my uh, uh, get my dilithium. Catch ready for another wave. All right, everyone. All right. This simulation is over. Here are your results. Here are our results. At at least, <laughs> at least I got to show off the abilities for one cycle before I got kicked. Sure. It looked cool, man. It's fun. It, it's a fun build, and it's doing better in advanced than I really thought it would. I ran some advanced uh, patrols earlier today just to just to see how it was doing because I hadn't done it on advanced before, and it pretty effectively shredded stuff. I enjoyed it. You gonna show your screen again, or are we, we just gonna watch me? Um, no, they can they can watch you. <laughs> so okay. I do have a joke. I well I you know what since we're showing off my build, let me go ahead and do it. Yeah. There Why we go. did so the ice cream my stuff. carry an umbrella? Why did the ice cream carry an umbrella? I have no idea. Because there's always a chance of sprinkles. Okay, that was that was decent. That was that was better than some of them. I actually don't don't listen to me. I enjoy your jokes. Okay, let's try this one more time and hopefully my power won't cycle this time. Oh, it is going to let me queue. I was afraid it would give that lever penalty or something. Maybe because it's an event. I don't know. I, I maybe. Maybe. Abandon us. I did. You. I totally did. How dare you abandon us? See if I can pull our stream back up real quick. Welcome to the Gamma Hydra training facility. Today, you'll be running through a modified version of a legendary Starfleet training scenario, the Kobayashi Maru. She's talking too much. In this excess. Oh, we got a carrier this time. No, it did not count. So it's tomorrow. What is? Um, the campaign event. It did not count that last one as an actual thing. This is the Kobayashi Your 20 hour timer not back? Or uh, not done? Whatever? Yeah, here we go. It's more of a, um... I just did the 20 hour timer. Ah. So it just restarted. But when oh. you complete the event, it restarts another thing. Yeah. So you, know, so you can get the, 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 the dilithium. dilithium. I was like, is that going to kill or not? Um, one more thing that I forgot to mention since we're still here. So for the visuals, I've got the super cooled combat impulse engines and the Lucari restorative initiative shield. Uh, that's giving me the uh, bright blue tail there. Which is supposed to be, you know, ice that's or whatever. For another way. The green. What do you expect? And then I've got these cool light blue lines going around the, the ship. And that's from the, the shield. So I thought that was fun. It fits the theme. Torpedoes away. Ooh, they got me. Um, your stream's not on on Discord for Oh. Got hit watch stream, it says. Oh, is that me? No, oh, it, it's... Green. Doing weird. Discord. Trying to be helpful, you know. Since it was a restart of a stream and not... The actual, like, uh, just hey, you're, you're still watching. It's like, you sure, you still want to watch. Wife. We do still want to watch. Here this score, the, so the super helpful. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm uh, I'm sitting here flying around doing this, and the whole time I'm now nervous that I'm gonna lose power again. <laughs> it's fine. Round. That's why I like having the UPS. It's not over yet. The next wave is coming. Oh, I don't want to put that on him. Come on, it's the doomsday machine. Get in front of it. I yeah, hear it's I almost, toasty up there. Got some marshmallows? I almost put my uh, gravity well on it. I hear marshmallows are lovely in front of the doomsday machine. They toast just okay. like... As long as it's not planet-sized, we'll be fine. The problem is retrieving them. <laughs> Before it gobbles it up. Yep. The acceleration affix is active. Oh boy, the acceleration affix. Uh -oh. This is the one that makes you go really fast there, ma'am. Yeah, I'm not in my, my squid right now. Oh, did you switch? I was wondering why we didn't have the bubble of death. Yeah, I switched over to a carrier. Alpha Quadrant Commander. Oh, we're killing things I apparently needed to for that. Right. Heads up! Another wave is coming your way! Okay, Another here we go. Wave. Enemy assault incoming! Survive the onslaught! Hey, at least it's not Vogwar. You know, we're all things considered, so far we're doing pretty good. I can't see, and I think I just flew into a bunch of warp core breaches. Yeah, well, they're all sitting inside my anomalies right now. I can't see anything. The Kobayashi Maru's health is at 50%. That's the way it's supposed to be, right? More anomalies up. Well, I was like, I've got anomalies, you've got anomalies. I've We're just full anomaly. of anomalies. Nom, oh, nom, that's... Nom. Yeah, nom nom's nom right. Nom oh, they got me. Darn it. I was trying to use my it's cooldowns. It's not over yet. The next wave yeah. is coming. All right, Em. Well, then it didn't matter. <laughs> Thanks for tagging along, man. All right, so, oh, Greebog, do you have a fleet update for us? Um, ADF is still progressing nicely. We are closing in on getting, our base is right on the edge of going to tier two. Um, we need to get, uh, what, a couple more projects done and uh, we'll be pushing tier two on Starbase. The Dilithium mine still needs some work, uh, but it is also nearing the, the final Tier three completion. It is also right on that 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 edge. Uh, I was debating where I was going to go next with the KDF fleet after the Dilithium mine because I wanted to get those discounts. But uh, part of me wants to go Spire so we can get the uh, attack console. But uh, yeah, that'd be that'd be good. I um, would agree with that decision. For for Fed, we we. Are still done with all the projects uh, outside of the colony. Um, I, I do queue up some here and there for provisions and such to try to uh, get more provisions and get people things that they can donate to. Um, but we are closing in uh, on Tier 5 on the colony. Um, we are 55 projects away from done on the morale. Um, we're we're a bit further out on the uh, looks like seventy five on, on the infrastructure, but uh, for for the renewable energy we are forty projects out. We're getting there. So we we are closing in on on finishing the colony. 
I'm All right, hoping so... to be looking at, at at the end of the year. You know, maybe we will be pushing the, the big projects. That would be cool. That would be really cool. So, um, as you guys saw when I was both on the ground in space, I, I have spam bars set up. This is new to me, but I'm actually really, really digging it. Um, so going along with that, next week we are going to teach you guys, for those that don't know, how to make keybinds. There's a couple different ways you can do it. There's third party programs, there's cut and paste, there's there's all kinds of stuff, and we're gonna discuss that next week. Um, I think that is everything. So I will see you out there. M? If it harms no one, do it. Protect the weak from the strong. All right. Thank you all. Live long and prosper.